Hello everyone, so in this video I'm not going to present a new feature or system but more a big improvement to one of the existing system and as you can see it's about the NPCs so um, recently I made a video actually on how to create your custom NPCs from start to finish and you know the process is very easy but it had a bit too many steps to my taste at least uh, it's something I wanted to do for a long time to actually improve this process and it's also um, you know, quite a few times some people have uh, minor issues when um, creating their own NPC, something really easy to fix, but just, for example, they miss one of the steps or whatever. And yeah, so I wanted to improve the entire process. And what I did is pretty much I just literally removed the entire prefab part. So um, if you didn't know yet, uh, to create a custom NPC in RPG Builder, you needed both the editor version, so like the template, where you have the stats, the loot tables, uh, all the settings, abilities, etc. And then you had to go uh, in the project or so and create an NPC prefab, just like we have one here, for example. And this prefab had a bunch of components with a lot of settings, and this could also be um, a bit overwhelming for most people, if they didn't really know how to um, to create all that or what to assign where. So what I did, like I said, is I completely removed the prefab part. You don't any, you don't have any prefab to create anymore. You just do it in the editor. And that's what we can uh, see here. So when we now go to the editor, we see the uh, prefab setup section. And um, in there, we can simply um, have all the data that we had to define before in the prefab, but accessible for us here. So I'm going to uh, minimize this for now. The first field, as you can see, is the NPC model. So this, of course, is still a prefab, but as you can see, it is just a model. So if I select this, there is no animator, there is no component, no script. It's just a, a model with, you know, the mesh renderers and things like that. So this is whatever um, model you want to use. So you simply drag and drop your model here and that's it. Now, before going further, I want to explain to you the uh, process that RPG Builder is now following when spawning an NPC. It doesn't matter if it's spawning from the developer panel or like from an actual NPC spawner or maybe one of your pets or from like an item or ability. But what happens is that it's simply uh, creating a new empty game object. It is going to name this uh, game object by the name of the uh, NPC here, not the display name, but the actual name. So you can simply um, and easily find them in the scene if you need to. So for example, there. And after that, it's actually going to um, instantiate the, um, the, the model, whatever you have here, inside it. Now, very important, it's also giving you control on the local values for the transform of this model. What I mean by this is that if, for example, you wanted this deer to be slightly a bit on the back or in the front or maybe higher from the ground for whatever reason, or maybe even like a, uh, an NPC which is kind of made to be underground, you know, you could just do that by um, assigning the model position here. As you can see, the deer actually has minus 32. Uh, oh, well, rather 032, just because I want it to be a little back um, in its, you know, NPC parents so that it looks more at the middle um, of the collider, etc. Same for the scale. So this is very useful if, for example, you had, uh, let's say, like a bear and a bear boss. You don't need a different prefab with a different size. You just use one model and you assign the scale inside it. So, for example, if you have two um, for the scale here, the uh, tier is just going to be assigned uh, to the scale 2 here. Now, the other field. So we have nameplate um, Y offset. This is how high from this point the nameplate is going to be in game. So uh, the nameplate, if you're not familiar with it, is a, um, well, pretty much, you know, when we see the name of the unit on top and the health bar and the effect on it, etc the animator controller, very easy. So in this case, I have my dear animator here and I can just drag and drop it here. The avatar, because you know, um, like I said earlier, it is going to first spawn an empty game object, then the model, but it is still going to add all those components, right? Because all those components are still needed. But the difference is that you don't have to define them yourself. RPG Builder is doing that for you based on the values you assign here. So what it's going to do is that it's going to add, for example, an animator here. 
but now it has no nothing here, right? So that's why you have to precise um, what animator it should use, what avatar, what update mode, cooling mode, root motion, all those options are, are here, as you can see. Uh, root motion, update mode, cooling mode, etc. Then it's also going to add a nav mesh agent. And as you can see, you also have control over the radius, the height, and pretty much all the values you need to tweak. And it's also going to spawn a collider for you. And in this case, you have the choice between capsule, sphere, and box colliders. And for each of those, you have different um, settings or values that you can define. And so in this case, if we have capsule, it's going to, you know, add a capsule collider. And it's going to assign the, um, the collider radius and height and center, etc. So that's pretty much it. Um, that's all you have to do. And I'm going to go in game and I disabled all other NPCs right now because I didn't set them up with the new system yet. But um, if I go in game and uh, look around here, for example, where the tears are spawning, you can see that it works perfectly. And I also set up this thing to be um, a deer pet. So as you can see, I can just click this box and now I have my own deer pet. And yeah, I just set it to five second duration actually. <laughs> so he's already dead, but yeah, um, that's working fine. And um, what I wanted to say also is before it was really annoying. If you look at the, well, first I'm going to just go in combat to show you that just really everything works exactly um, like before. Up. And we will be able to kill it just normally. And just everything, nothing changed on that part. Like the entire like game, um, gameplay or whatever, nothing of this is different. But uh, what I wanted to say before the end of the video is that um, if you did work on your own pet before, uh, we had to do this very annoying thing, which is pretty much having two different prefabs. Why? Because this one had the type pet and this one had the type mob on the combat node, which is actually a very important settings because it's going to run very different logic, right? Um, if it's a pet, it's then going to follow its owner. If it's a mob, it's not gonna do all that, etc. And um, this process is now automated for you, meaning that um, if we go to NPCs here, for example, you see that we don't really have um, anything defined as a mob or pets, but if I now go to effects and um, I know I have a test effect for the tier, this one, which is the one I just used in the demo when clicking on the cube, you see that here um, before we actually assigned a prefab, so the NPC prefab, and now I change this field to be the NPC from the editor instead, meaning that it's going to spawn whatever NPC you want here and assign it as type of pet. So this is also one more step removed and just making it a lot easier um, in general to have pet and you know all kind of NPCs. So anyway, uh, that's all I wanted to show you. Um, nothing really um, too complicated or too new or different. If anything, it's just making your life easier. So I hope you like it. And um, like I said, this will be coming in version 1.1. So thank you for watching and see you in the next video.